kapampangan ni sakwak kinlegwan ng alaya gabunding pantas at marangal sibul ng lubut karinad ng tepangan the kapampangan region Even in those days, it was a land rich in natural beauty and resources. Originally, it occupied a much larger area, probably the entire river basin extending as far north as Nueva Vizcaya. Over the years, however, the colonizers carved out new provinces and towns. Many of these areas have remained Kapampangan which only means that the political perimeters do not coincide with the linguistic boundaries. Because the land was rich, the Spaniards made it the first colonial province in 1571 after defeating the Kapampangans led by Tariq Soliman. By 1598, Pampanga was supplying the Spanish government in Manila with a weekly quota of 300 chickens 2,000 eggs and other agricultural produce so that when the crops failed in Pampanga, Manila starved. Spain also depended on Kapampangan soldiers to help them defend the colony. Kapampangans, for example, were called upon to quell several 17th century Chinese insurrections. In 1762, the British invaders occupied Manila and forced the Spaniards to transfer the seat of government to Bacolor, Pampanga. Soon thereafter, Kapampangans attacked the British camps, eventually leading the Spanish to victory. As a result, Spain treated Pampanga as a favored province, allowing Kapampangan chieftains self-rule giving Kapampangan children the privilege to study in exclusive Spanish schools in Manila and opening the Spanish army to Kapampangan soldiers. It is no surprise then that most pioneers in various professions were Kapampangans. First Filipino priests, first Filipino nuns, first Filipino doctors, and so forth. Kapampangans also continued to be loyal to the Spaniards until the revolution in 1898 when thousands of Kapampangans protected the last Spanish soldiers and their families near the bay in Makabebe. History doesn't know what to make of the Makabebes who fought side by side with the Spaniards and later with the Americans. Some accuse them of excessive loyalty to their own country. Others say they cannot be expected to be patriotic to a country that wasn't yet existing at that point in history. The Makabebes had no concept of a nation. They sided with the colonizers only to fight their traditional foes, the Tagalogs. They helped capture General Aguinaldo in protest against his betrayal of their hero, Andres Bonifacio. At any rate, the Makabebes, as well as the rest of the Kapampangans, were known far and wide for their bravery and military skills. The first natives to resist the Spanish invaders in Luzon were Kapampangans, led by Tariq Soliman. History is replete with Kapampangan-led revolts against forced labor, excessive taxes, and other abuses against Spain, and then later, against America. Kapampangans were at the forefront of wars, revolutions, and social protests. General Maximino Hizon of Mexico, Jose Alejandrino of Arayat, Francisco Macabulos of La Paz, Tarlac, and Aurelio Tolentino of Guagua. The revolt of the masses against social injustice was spurred by such names as Pedro Abad Santos, Luis Taruk, and Bernabe Buscaino. And finally, a Kapampangan gave up his life to end the dictatorship, Benigno Aquino Jr. I've been 
Long before the Spaniards came, Kapampangans have had a flowering civilization with their own versions of society, education, religion, and commerce. Much of it, though, was destroyed by the colonizers as well as by volcanic eruptions, floods, and other natural disasters. Today, only traces of the past can be seen in folk traditions, stories, songs, archaeological finds, and books written by ancient chroniclers who, once upon a time, visited the region and saw what the Kapampangans were like. Whatever is left will soon disappear completely if nothing is done to stop its deterioration, neglect, and destruction. It is for this reason that Holy Angel University established the Center for Kapampangan Studies as its contribution to ongoing efforts to retrieve what has been lost. Remember what has been forgotten. Restore what has been destroyed. Study what has been recovered. And popularize once more what has been taken for granted. The center alone cannot accomplish these tasks. We need Kapampangans who have enough respect for their ancestors to take what has been handed down to them, and enough love for their descendants to turn over what has been entrusted to them. Already, the signs that the Kapampangan culture is vanishing are truly alarming. Few Kapampangans speak in Kapampangan. Fewer still read in Kapampangan and almost no one still writes in Kapampangan except in text messages. The mission of the center is to preserve and promote the Kapampangan cultural and historical heritage, and in so doing, contribute to the total development of the Kapampangan people, and eventually, of the Filipino nation and the global community.